Okay, so welcome back. Now, a while back, we did some videos talking about a programming language called Fortran, or Formula Translation. And Fortran's been around since probably the 1950s, I think. And it is used, uh, apparently still used, in a number of corporations, organizations, research facilities, and so on, in their code, where it requires some very heavy mathematical calculations. And apparently, Fortran is still really, really fast at doing certain mathematical calculations. Now, I don't know the specifics of that. It's hard to find data explaining exactly where it's really good at. But apparently some people think it's really important to use Fortran for their mathematical calculations. And we talked about some of the basics of Fortran and some of my experiences with Fortran. I started back in the 1970s, early 1970s in engineering school doing Fortran on punch cards. However, since then, I haven't had much use for it, but a while back, I started looking into it to see if there's any benefit in using Fortran. And we, I did like three or four videos talking about Fortran and some of the basics. And we also talked about what you see here, which is installing a freestanding IDE or integrated development environment on Windows called CodeBlocks, which has a built-in Fortran compiler and we showed you how to do that. There's multiple other IDEs that you can install. We just chose CodeBlocks. And we showed how to put together a very simple Fortran application in CodeBlocks. And you can see here one example where it's a very simple five lines of code where we basically call an external application to plot some data. And let me run this and show you what it's doing. And here is the result. And we're running an application called GNU Plot. And what this application does is it basically runs GNU plot, grabs some data from a CSV file, which has time and value lines separated by commas. And in this case, we are grabbing some actual real world data from a data acquisition device that measures over a span of about 30 minutes, the electric power system frequency at a certain location. You can see here 60 Hertz and it bounces around we showed you how to do that so you can access external CSV files. We also showed you how to, for example, access uh, in external hardware over a serial port and gather data. We showed you how to do that in Fortran. Um, so I encourage you to look at that. And what we haven't done is talked about what you see here, which is um, we actually have Fortran. We have this application that is generating a form. And if you're familiar with Windows Forms, you can see this is a form and it's got some menu items. And you might say, hey, wait a minute, how can Fortran generate this form? You know, every time I say anything about Fortran, it's all command line stuff that does some very basic calculations for those who are working on Fortran that runs under the hood doing the core mathematical calculations. You may not need this user interface, but if you do, uh, it's nice to be able to figure out how you can generate controls, as they're called in Windows Forms, like buttons. And here you see charts and different windows and forms and text boxes and so on. So what we're going to look at in this video is how can we start to develop a Fortran application that can access the Windows forms and different controls. Now, one thing you're going to notice is that in something like code blocks, you're probably not going to be able to generate a Windows forms type of application with all the controls. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to, instead of using code blocks or the standalone IDE, we're going to show you how to use Visual Studio. We're going to talk about Community Edition, which we've used here for many years. It's a free Visual Studio. Again, we're not talking about Visual Studio Code, which is basically just a text editor. We're talking about Visual Studio Community Edition, which is the full Visual Studio. And it gives you all the incredible functionality of Visual Studio. Uh, if you work in a project with a group of people, you're probably going to have to do version control using Git. And that's really nice. It's built into Visual Studio. 
So there's a bunch of reasons why you might want to use Visual Studio for your Fortran development rather than something like CodeBlocks. So we're going to show you how to use your existing Visual Studio. And what we're going to do is we're going to install a free Fortran compiler from Intel. And the Intel Fortran compiler allows you to access the Windows Forms type of controls and do graphical user interface. Now, um, if you're like me, you may be surprised that the Intel Fortran compiler is free. Apparently, in recent years, they have made it freely available. So really nice that now you can um, install that compiler and benefit all the, from all the functionality. Now, also keep in mind that if you're going to be developing Fortran and uh, Windows Forms type of applications, accessing the Windows controls like the forms and the windows and the text boxes can be really, really complicated. And they even mention that in the documentation on the Intel Fortran compiler. So just keep that in mind. It's not like you drag and drop a control and you run it and it works. Uh, you're going to have to do a lot of coding or at least copying and pasting existing coding. And we're going to show you um, that it can be, you know, like a thousand lines of code just to bring up a form and some menu items. So keep that in mind. So now, assuming you've got Visual Studio already installed and you're using Visual Studio, the only thing we have to do is download the Intel Fortran compiler. And it's very easy to find this. Just search for Intel Fortran compiler and it should bring you to this page, the Intel page and the overview tab. And there's overview, download and documentation and resources. And I encourage you to look at documentation and resources if you have any problems. It's got a lot of good uh, information there. Well, we're going to go back to overview and we're going to download the standalone version and we're going to download the Intel Fortran compiler. Now, to do this, you can either do it with a paid business license or you can do it for free. And you can see Intel Fortran compiler. We selected Windows, offline installer, download. Now you can enter a business email address and so on, or you can continue as a guest and download starts immediately. So click on that and you can see it's downloading. So once that's done downloading, you'll see this uh, Intel Fortran compiler offline.exe. All you have to do is double click on that and it will go through the install process and it will integrate into Visual Studio. So really nice. So what we can do next is we can start up Visual Studio once this has been installed. And here's Visual Studio 2022 and we can create a new project. And what we can do is we can go up to select from all languages. We can select Fortran and Windows. And also we can select Desktop. And it will give us all the choices from this uh, Intel Fortran compiler. And you can see we've got standard graphics application, which sounds like it might be something we will want, uh, but actually it's not. Also, QuickWin is a project for creating an application that supports graphical user interface, but that is a very, very limited GUI application. So I don't suggest you do that. It's basically going to give you maybe a single console window, but certainly not what we want. And standard graphics application is not what we want. However, if you scroll down, you will see SDI code, which is um, single interface and MDI is multiple interface. So this is what we're going to select. We're going to use MDI and this allows you to make multiple uh, windows. So we're going to click on that next and we're going to say MDI test and hit create. And here we have our application that basically uses MDI and this IFX. And you can see we've got the header files, resource files, source files, and um, we have MDI test F90, which is the Fortran 90, and then globals. And you can see up here, MDI test F90. And you can see down here that it's got quite a few lines of code. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it up. This is the default application, the default project. And what it's going to give us is something that might be kind of surprising. Here is a Windows form with a file, edit, window, and help. So this default project gives us the core of a Windows Forms application. So really nice. Um, they start you out with basically what you need. Now, the challenge is, if you look here at all of the code, if you scroll down, you will find that there is almost 1,000 lines of code here to generate that simple Windows form with some menu items, okay? So you have to get down into these handles for the windows and everything else, which if you work with C++, for example, you know how challenging it can be, which is why when we did our C++, uh, we used something like I am GUI, which makes that whole thing uh, a whole lot easier. You don't have to get down to this low level. So keep in mind, you're going to have to, if you want to do Windows Forms type stuff with your Fortran and this um, Intel Fortran compiler, you're going to have to get down to these very low levels, okay? So just keep that in mind. So that gives you an idea of how to get started if you do want to continue along this route of doing Windows Forms. So now, as I mentioned, I encourage you to look at the Intel website uh, under the um, Intel Fortran compiler for documentation. You'll probably find this web page using Intel Visual Fortran to create and build Windows-based applications. And um, this says creating windowing applications with Intel Fortran. You can build Fortran applications that are also fully featured Windows-based applications. So you can have um, toolbars, pull-down menus, dialog boxes, and other features. And it says down here, to build your application as a Fortran Windows application in the visual development environment, choose windowing application from the list of project types when you open a new project. Now, as we showed, that doesn't exist, that windowing application. So I'm not sure what they're talking about, whether this is out of date or if this is only for the paid version of the Intel software or whatever. Um, so not too clear what that's talking about. However, if we go down here, there's understanding coding requirements for Fortran. It told, tells you WinMain, how to access that. And then it says using menus and dialogues in SDI, as we showed, and MDI, Fortran windowing applications. So how to create the menu, how to use the menu. When you create a new SDI or MDI application, a default menu bar is created for you. I'm not sure what they're talking about. They're talking about Visual Studio Resource Editor. So if you want to proceed with this, I encourage you to take a look at this and see maybe there's ways to uh, generate these different controls a lot easier than having to generate the raw code. But again, take a look at this Intel website for the Fortran compiler, and it should help you to develop um, your code. And it also talks about, for example, creating and using DLLs using QuickWin. We showed that QuickWin is one of the project types in Visual Studio. And again, it's going to uh, mention that it's a fairly simple console application, pixel-based graphics, uh, text windows, character fonts, and so on. But it's kind of very limited compared to, for example, the MDI. So that's about it for this one. I'm not sure if I'll go into any further detail on this, really. It's so much more complicated than just using a uh, C-sharp Windows Forms application. I'm not sure why you'd want to do it, um, but it's there for anybody who's interested. So take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.